Hello, chat. Good morning, chat. Is anyone there, chat? How are y'all doing? Woo. All my phone alerts are going. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hang on. Let me see. All my alerts just blew up. Let me see. Do I, do I have all my tasks done? Do I have all my tasks done? Good morning, Corinne. Where's my alerts are not being alerty? OSU, Corinne, thank y'all so much for the subs. Y'all are awesome. Um, watching while sending work or emails. That's uh, good you actually get to watch today for a minute, uh, Sarah. Usually just on break. <clears throat> Tomax, glad you were able to make it today. I hope you're able to make it more often. Uh, I'm sorry I'm looking at my phone. I'm just trying to see what all these alerts are. I don't know what's going on. Whoa, there's another one. Patrick, thank you. Hype train incoming. So let's go. How's everyone doing this morning? <laughs> yeah, you'll get in trouble. No, you'll get in trouble. Thunder Viking, 10 months. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Sorry, I'm not paying attention. My phone is not working. This whole thing is dumb. Okay. Who was that? Who was that? Paper Cat Lady. Thank you. Hype Train Level 2. Let's go. This is what happens. This is what happens when I don't when I don't stream on uh, on Tuesday. Y'all can all come in and drop your uh, drop your subs on Thursday. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that, Mr. Brooks, Mr. Brooks man. Hope you're doing okay. Um, yeah, way to go, Tessa. Can't you just read? Do you, are you not reading everything I post online, no matter what and where? Like, get with the program, please. So actually, let's talk about that real quick. That was actually something I wanted to mention before. Not that. Not We're not going to throw Tessa under the bus here. Um, CoolNet, thanks for the sub. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, just a reminder, this goes for myself as well, that when we're talking about things going on in the community or going on in the world or this company did that or that person did or didn't say that, just remember that you might, they might not say the thing everywhere and you might not be following the place where they did. So, you know, you think about that, like, you know, I don't wanna, like this comes up because of the Black Lives Matters, you know, stuff, you know. Um, you know, we're like, oh, did such and such say this? Did such and such say that? I was like, well, not everyone follows that person or that business across all platforms and maybe they only shared it on like their most popular platform or the platform that'll see the most eyes or on their blog that you might not read and things like that so just be careful that's all i'm saying is just be careful about um you know commenting about topics when you may not be aware that there's other places that you know, things get said, things like that. This is something I think about for myself. I was like, oh, did such and such do this? I was like, oh, you know, I didn't check their, like, I don't, I'm not on Facebook, right? So I don't have, I didn't see their, uh, I didn't see their Facebook post and they didn't cross post it to Twitter, whatever. So it's just something to be conscious of, you know? So, all right, that was it. Yep. So there you go, Evan. Good point. All right, so that was it. That was my little message message for today um, that I've been thinking about recently. And, um, you know, you just, this, it's like, it's, it's the internet culture. It's the millennials. Just kidding. So we just got to, let's breathe before we act. <laughs> and say, oh, you know what? Maybe I haven't looked everywhere or maybe I don't need to because it's probably not worth it. Good morning, Moto Lisa. Good morning, Podcast Planner. Podcast Planner, is that Addy? Is that Addy in, the, in our feed? For those who don't know, um, Addy had a great uh, friend of the show podcast. If you're a Pen Addict member, she did a wonderful job on, on the podcast, which I think it was the last one released. I got I to gotta see who's releasing today. I think it might be... 
a friend of the pen show, Kimberly Lau, uh, might be today. Yeah, so yay, Eddie. <clears throat> Aurelius, you're not wrong, right? But we have to take that some of that responsibility, I believe. Right? All us 40-year-old millennials, right? I, I'm totally a millennial. Like, I don't, I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, like, I've totally lost track of what all the, uh, I don't even know. Millennial has totally lost meaning, right? Because it's used almost as a slur, and it's ridiculous. Like, there's no meaning. Hey, good morning, Eve. Yeah, so, like, the best thing I ever taught myself was to not instantly react to, to anything. Just like um, uh, Miss Jesus saying, right? This, this, this is, like, a good life lesson. Don't – your instant reaction, while it might technically be right, it may not be necessary, right? You, it's, it's okay to think about it a little bit more. You don't have to show how fast you are and then have to walk things back. Gen X is best. Yeah, I think I'm Gen X, right? We've collected all the level one emotes. I don't know what that means, but we got them, chat. All level one hype train, such strong support. So y'all have more emotes to use in the chat. If you're new in the chat, we do have some custom emotes. So 1980, see, that's the thing is like, how do you draw the line? What are the lines between the millennials and things like that? Oh, the emotes are being delivered. Y'all did a good job. See, I think that's Gen X as well, would be my guess. But I was born in 71. I think I'm Gen X, but like, maybe not. Am I a boomer? I'm a okay boomer. I do have gray in my beard. Look at that. Look at that chat. We're getting that gray, y'all. Getting that gray beard. 65 to 1980. Yeah. But hey, it's more, like I said, it's more of a, um, it's more of a feeling. It's more of a, a representation of your mindset than anything, I think. So, yeah. It, that's what I, more than a, like a, an age classification where you are. Uh, no, I'm, Sarah, you don't know how old I am? Of all people, you don't know how old I am? Come on now. Come on, Sarah. I am old people up in here. Yeah, we always, for, for new people, like especially in person, like if I go to a pen show and go out to dinner with a group, we always play the, we always play the how old is Brad game. Um, cause the answer, cause especially like if I'm with Mike, cause Mike knows and he likes to, uh, thanks Robo Jim. Oh, you didn't get the alert. Dang it. Um, Mike gets full enjoyment out of playing the let's play how old Brad is game, um, like in the car on the way to dinner because it, no one ever comes <laughs> no one ever comes close. Fortunately, I don't know what this hair I've got going right now. Like I'm looking aged um, for sure. So um, if I shave this beard off, it, I would be I would I would knock like a decade off instantly. Because I'm skipping Chicago, yeah, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep skipping. Oh, dude, the hair the hair is beyond beyond uh, control right now. Like it's like I don't know, it's so long, like it just falls back on itself, right? This is like, look how long it is right now. Like I can't I can't even do anything with it. Like I don't even try. It's like. You know, I gotta get I gotta get a haircut soon. Like I've been shaving the sides, but not the top. Go full mullet. Well, I don't have any. I'm not running it long in the back. I hate long hair in the back and on the sides. It it bugs me. Just turned 37. Well, happy birthday, happy late birthday. Oh, born in 1980, getting lumped in with the with the millennials that'd be funny but yeah i have to um oh sh sam she's putting my son's hair in like a top knot 37 in a row that's right yeah my son is on the same haircut schedule as me and his hair my my daughter is like putting it in in pigtails on little little pigtails on the top of his head 
so that's where we have we haven't had a haircut in months um so yeah it's a it's a mess right now but i'm just not interested i'm just not interested in getting a haircut right now we'll see how things go like by the end of this month i'll be ready to say all like let's go do a haircut i'm not ready yet so i'm not ready for that elizabeth she could probably do it my wife used to cut my hair um when i kept it real short evan max thanks for the sub um back in the day when i kept it real short yo 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 elizabeth everyone thinks you should cut my hair should do you want to cut my hair so that's my daughter in there under my wife's account so yeah it is we are past due for haircuts because yeah that's a lot it's a mess so yeah who knew that's what we we're going to talk about today millennials and uh haircuts cut it yourself i might i'm not too concerned about it so I'll, I'll probably just cut it myself if it starts bugging me but right now it's 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 not tameable right now right it's too long it's so long now it just falls back like i see um i see long hairs like in the bathroom now and it's like why is my wife or daughter you know using my sink or whatever and i'm like oh wait it's me because i have long hairs now so yeah so we trimmed the sides but haven't done the top but might as well not too worried about it so let's talk about pens let's let's get off my let's get off my hair even though it's kind of in your face and I, it kind of it's bothering me because i see myself and i'm like holy cow that's some hot mess going right there robo jim you're strictly a millennial yeah you're a youngster you're a youngster but you you act you act like a uh you act like a gen xer you're 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 uh an elder millennial <laughs> an elder millennial so yeah it's more like evan was saying it's more of uh of representation of mindset than the actual age that you're born like there's people my age and younger that are probably just like big time boomers right just by it's like okay okay boomer stuff so it's like whatever all right you want to talk about pens we should talk about pens or something like that all right, so Tessa got two new pens, a 101 in gray blue and a 101 in bright red, double 101s, double 101s. So those are awesome pens. What nibs did you get in them? Jim, did you see Mike's National Ballpoint Day video? I just saw the intro screen and I haven't gone over to watch it um, yet today. Um, <laughs> even supposing they think you wrote on dinosaurs. That's great. Yeah, I still there's still things that come up with my kids that they're like they're like wait a minute like what you didn't have like you know like a cell phone or anything like that or how did you how did you you know do the internet and it's like mm, that wasn't an internet. <clears throat> We're gonna talk about the roadie for sure. Um, I have not explained to my kids what a floppy disk is. Um, they would have a hard time with CDs, even though like when they were born, I had like huge CD collections and would play them in the car. I don't know that they would totally grasp now, even CDs, like that's how young they are. Oh, I use, I grew up on the true, what five and a, was it five and a half, five and a quarter? The, the real floppy. Yeah. A 3d save icon. Oh no, this really is about pens, Dretton. This is, yeah, Cavalier about pens, Cavalier about my hair. Like, look, like this is about pens. Like, what can I show you? Oh, that case didn't make it. All right, this case made it. All right, one dog night. How did you miss the uh, the stealth? Good morning, Coco Lena. How did you miss the stealth uh, stealth release? Did I not bring my sailor? I'm so mad. Oh, this is why you don't have black cases in your backpack. This is why we make bright cases. I couldn't even see them. No problem, Dretton. See, look, this is what we do. We talk about pens. Like, seriously. Like, go to penaddict.com. That's my blog. This is what we do. We talk about pens. But we talk about just fun and life and other stuff and my, my hair and my age. 
uh, it was totally like it's dark in this room despite the lighting here um it's pretty dark and looking down on my backpack it's like a, a black hole and then this black case in there I, I couldn't see it so that's why people like our bright cases that we make i know this has a green it's like an olive green drab kind of lining so you have a cd player you hadn't used in a long time because you feel like it's going to blow up or something yeah so elizabeth has this little radio she'll carry around and uh but i haven't seen that seen that in ages yeah that fujiyama blue is really good uh brass town is the best case design we've ever made so they sold out everywhere jackie i saw the picture retro posted and then um i never had a disc man um robo gem that was always one of those things i wanted but could never justify my so when i grew up i never owned an eight track but my uncle lived with us for a while and him and i shared a room he was younger um my wife's uh, my mom's youngest brother was only a few years older than me and in our room that we shared he had an eight track player so we listened to his eight tracks so i'm not far from eight tracks but i never owned one but um you know obviously had tons of cassettes i was there when cds launched um the first CD I ever bought was REM's Document. That was my first CD. I'll always remember that, and I remember exactly where I bought it. It was at the Turtles on uh, Cumberland Parkway in Atlanta. Sarah probably knows where that is. The Turtles is no longer there, but on right off Cumberland Parkway, there was a Turtles, and I bought REM's Document, and it was probably like twenty something dollars. And like to play in my two hundred dollar CD player I had at home, or whatever those things cost at the time, that you had to hook into your stereo speakers. Yeah, it's funny, uh, Moto Lisa, how they're not even putting CD players in cars anymore. Like, I had to look in my car to see if I even had one. It does. My car's from 2015, and it does. I don't think I've ever, ever used it. Sir Jerkface, that's pretty cool. And, like, I see cassettes making kind of a comeback, like people at least talking about them. I don't know that I'd want to buy a cassette player to support I'd like I'd rather buy vinyl and a record player. If I was gonna do something vintagey, I would buy um vinyl and a record player as opposed to like a set player. Oh, I bet Michael Jackson was a lot of first people CDs. Absolutely. Yeah, so that would have been like that would have been like eighty seven, eighty eight when I bought that. Something like that. Yep. But um, I definitely always had Walkmans, but and then I had Discman, Discmans, but I never had like the mini disc players. I don't remember my first cassette. I mean, I just had tons, but I don't remember what they would have been. Yeah, this is making like how did we even get on this topic? But I, I like I'm I'm for this topic. Like I used to religiously shop at like the UCD stores. They were like this is something like my kids would know. There were entire businesses that were used CD stores and you just go in and browse and find like old weird CDs for like $3 or something like that. And they'd have the, they'd have the uh, notch cut out of the side of the thing so that they know that they were resold as used. Wait to explain Columbia house. I'm not going to do that because they would be all for it. They were like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> There's probably some Columbia house they could get roped into right now. A new piece of equipment had software on a CD and had no way to use it on your laptop. That's funny. Yeah, like these days, like it's fine you have that, but you have to have another option. Hey, here's the link to go to go get our uh, information. Records from the 1800s. That's insane. Oh my god, the buffering and cleaning for the CDs. Forget it. Yeah, I did I did Columbia House once. I got sucked into it once. I was like, fine, fine. There's a bunch of albums I want. I'll pay the thing. And then whatever the like the shortest term that I had to buy afterwards, like three records. So I was like, fine, I'll do that. You still use CDs every day? I mean, that's library technology, right? <laughs> 
CDs under your sister's name. Yeah, I can't... I, I can't remember the last time I actually um, used a CD or a disc for install. It hadn't been that long. I miss Tower Records too. Tower was my home. We lived a few miles from the Tower at Linux when uh, I had an apartment with some friends at Linux Square Mall in Atlanta. That was like the the cool hip downtown mall, and they had the that's where the big Tower Records were. And I just lived in the import section of Tower Records. That's why I liked it because even back then, that's when I was listening to all the British music. So I would shop the import section. Um, just constantly uh, I'd buy imports CD singles and live stuff good times good times is that tower record still there Sarah I don't know if Sarah's still here or if she would know that's got to be gone I would imagine yeah tower went under right <laughs> Columbia house got me writing lines as punishment that's a fact that is a fact all right, uh, imports and bootlegs, man. That's why I'd, I'd go. I get the imports from Tower Records, and then there was always a record convention, a huge record convention once a year in Atlanta, and that's where I'd get all the bootleg uh, live concert stuff, like twenty bucks a pop. Yeah, it was over in that that side mall adjacent to Linux was where the Tower Records was. But I think Tower went under, so certainly it's not there. One feedback I got on the course evaluation was that CDs are an outdated form of media. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, y'all want to see some roadies? I got some roadies. So Tuesday, I did not stream because I was on the road going to meet Brian, my partner in Spoke Pen. Brian is the brain's behind spoke pen um i don't know what i am i that doesn't mean i'm the brawn because i'm definitely not the brawn um i i i'm the face <laughs> of spoke pens let's go with that uh, <laughs> so brian is the brains and the talent behind spoke pens and uh so i'm i just i just work here so let me get out my stuff so what i went to pick up was a bunch of restock for our standard our standard lineup of pens, which we've been sold out of so many products for so many months just because of shipping and manufacturing out of China with the uh, COVID-19 COVID um, being such a, uh, such a delay on shipping everything. And so we finally got main pens, rest I am definitely the ship station. Although Brian shipped a bunch uh, not too long ago. So we had a restock finally got all the parts in our spoke pins have 10 parts in them and if we're missing one part we're just sitting there with hundreds of pins ready to be final assemblied like this time it was clips clips held us back for like almost two months for the single stinking clip on the pin um so we're finally we were going to put them up yesterday it's a pain in the butt to manage the back end of inventory so Brian's gonna get them up by noonish today so if you're looking for things like the Joker or some of the like we have a new all silver anodized which is really nice all that stuff's going up today um, you could have gotten a clipless spoke sir jerk face it would have had a notch in the cap but it would have been clipless so um, um, so all that's going up today plus like some of the new pencil shapes um, the five has a little bit of different scalloping on it. So, um, the community around just the spoke mechanical pencils is fascinating. Like, I think a lot of people don't understand like how unique that pencil is. And like, we get like, there's this pen community and there's this pencil community and there, there's a little bit, not, there's kind of not a lot of crossover. We have some hardcore mechanical pencil users. So putting about 200 pins up today and there you have it and then probably another 200 in a couple weeks so we'll have plenty so when i met brian we've been talking on the Ru on the rudy 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 good lord i was reading raw aluminum version in the chat um i need to double check there is now a silver anodized right so it takes the aluminum and then does a silver anodization on top of it so from appearances it looks raw uh, aluminum but it's actually 
anodized. We did. We have had raw aluminum in the first version. I don't think there's a restock of the raw aluminum at this time. So the roadie is not being put up for a while because we're still like finalizing what we want to do. So Brian handed me the samples that he made of the roadie and I'm playing around with them. So what the roadie is, is it's going to take the existing cap of the spoke pin. So that's the standard size spoke pin cap. And you can tell it looks a little bit bigger, right? Like it's like the uh, aesthetic is a little bit strange, like when it's capped, but it's designed so we can use the same magnet system and use the same grip sections. So this is, um, this is all so it will post, right? So the proportions are off because it posts, right? So that's the why it looks like the cap is so much bigger than the barrel because it is, because you're not gonna get a post on a metal pin without it, okay? So that's the, one of the sacrifices you make. You may, you may hate it and may decide not to use this pin because of that. But the way it's designed, think of it like a Kaveco Sport, right? So the Kaveco Sport, thanks Kles, appreciate the sub so much. The Kaveco Sport has, you know, a big back end of the barrel. So we did this so we didn't have to change the grip and the cap and the clip, right? This is the same grip. So this is the same front end of the standard spoke pin, the same nose cone, and the same cap, same clip. But we've modified the barrel to obviously be short. It's a short barrel and then a stainless steel magnet on the back. So it not only posts, it's a magnet. So it's gonna stay on there, right? And your writing position, it gets up over your hand long enough to where you're comfortable writing it. And then it pops back down into this. This is not the only color combo. The refill it takes, it's the Parker style refills, um, but we're, using the Jetstream SXR07 in black is what we're going to ship these with. So this is the new Jetstream refill. You never post any pen. You may not have to post this pen. I'll show you the other colors and we don't know if these are going to be the official colors yet. Everything I say here is is still up in the air. So you could probably use this unposted Tessa, right? It gets there, right? So and there, there's the back end. The back end sod solid. So this is a new part designed to allow the posting of the pin. So we basically shrunk the barrel diameter and style of the regular spoke pin to make this. So this is the purple anodized with a brass grip. This is the only brass grip we have. We don't know if we're going to offer it. I'm testing it right now. It feels pretty good. Then we have like a cyan and silver, right? So it's like this. Would this be better on the side cam? Let's see. Ooh, that's very dark. I guess you can see it okay. So yeah, there's the cyan and like it just posts like that probably just black caps for now but we'll see yeah probably just black caps for now to be determined though we'll eventually have all kinds of color caps probably for the first version uh black caps that's too dark to see um then we have orange so this is the cyan with the standard titanium grip and then the orange with the stone washed grip can we get this in here so that's the stone washed titanium grip. That's the difference there. Yeah, we'll have more cap options eventually, maybe not on launch. So, so like that's the orange. Like that. You can see the, the magnets are very tight. Magnets looks good. Yeah, the stone wash came out good. So here's an all black. So that's a black aluminum anodized grip. So you can get like the all black pen. So yeah, Sassy Helens, thanks for the follow. Um, and then here is just the aluminum with the uh, whoops with the standard with the standard grip. 
So yeah, it's very cool. I'm testing out this brass grip to see if we want to do something like with the weight of this. But of course, like Brian's the magnet guru. So these magnets are awesome. You don't have to worry about losing them on either end of the pin, right? Like I'm giving this a pretty, pretty good shake. And uh, yeah, so that's the roadie. It's the pocket. It's the pocket spoke pin. I don't have a price point yet, so don't ask me. I, they're, I mean, they're going to be close to what the existing ones are, right? Like I've talked plenty of times how just because you make something smaller doesn't mean the cost is less. It's sometimes more. So I don't have that yet. Um, one thing Brian did play around with with our clip manufacturer is we're getting some pre-anodized clips. I don't know when or if we're going to offer these, but this is something just for me to check out so we can get like different colors of anodized clips. So we might be looking at some, doing something like this. So, you know, this, the reason, the way we built spoke pen was to allow us to mix and match all kinds of colors and barrel types and designs. Like both Brian and I like color. So yeah, would it be cool to have like a purple pen, a brass grip, a lime cap and like a purple anodized clip or something right like i want to be able to mix and match all this stuff like i would be completely for that so that's where we're at right now um we're at least a month away from the roadie launch but um the rest of it's um rest of it's back in stock so yeah this is it's been a process <laughs> For us to keep up with the inventory um, just in general general spoke pens and pencils because the feedback has been so good and real, real positively received which I'm very very happy about and this is just kind of an experiment we want to try with this shorter version and different refill and I think it makes a lot of sense with what we're already making um, to kind of fit into that lineup and it allows us to use some of the parts we already have with to make a cool pen without too much, uh, you know, crazy engineering. You know, we really just re-engineered the backside of the barrel was it, um, which is cool. So these will be just solid. All these will be solid. These will not have the spoke notches in there. So yeah, will it scratch over time? I don't know. These are coated on the inside. Um, I forget what it, the coating's called. Um, I'll have to think of the name of it. But yeah, I mean, it'll probably eventually scratch, I would imagine right it's just second nature it's metal on metal are there other cap colors today no eventually yes so we'll do of other cap colors besides black down the line roadie launch at the same time kickstarter shipping yeah probably i will be busy no it's like a liquid like that we apply i i don't know what it's called jim you really really need the pencil with the clip i hear you I don't know. I don't know that we'll ever do it. It's it's kind of doesn't look right. It's, I don't know. It wasn't Teflon. I'd have to look it up. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's green when you <laughs> when you squirt it out the bottle, then it goes on clear. Oh, is there a Kickstarter update? Yes, the pens are paid for. I paid the invoice yesterday, which means they're done and they're going to be shipping to me in about a month. Do any of the Kaveco clips fit? I haven't tried. I think I'm certain they would be too wide, like far too wide. But I haven't tried the Lilliput clip. Yes, yeah, spokedesign.com for these. Not not frog lube. So yeah, the uh, the Kickstarter update is that I should have the pins in a couple of weeks, maybe like a week, and then Anna has uh, Skylab Letterpress has the posters underway so i'm imagining in like a month like sometime in july i'll be able to sh start shipping backer pens and posters so that's the update for um for the pen attic kickstarter retro 51 it's coming along fast so yeah cal um i'll be doing the roadie around the time i'll be doing the uh the kickstarter fulfillment so july is going to be something at the uh at the notco pen attic spoke shipping department um it's three full shipping departments now <laughs> the knock and pen attic i run off the same same uh, machine uh and the same setup and then i have a separate area set up for spoke so yeah the shipping department's crazy which brings me to another point
I figured out who's laying the internet because this will be going to the shipping department too, which means maybe I can have some shipping streams, which sounds completely boring, but it would be like this, but with me shipping products and y'all chatting. <laughs> so it's actually not a big company that's doing our fiber. It's a local, it's a small local ISP that's running fiber. And they just, they just announced it like yesterday or two days ago. Um, on Facebook again why I need a Facebook account um, so they are gonna um, there it's coming along well K9 play thanks for the sub appreciate you shipping hype um, so K9 play I have a I have an idea or I have a question for you so I, I'm gonna hold this thought but remind me I have a shipping question for you that relates to all of this but the fiber um, are Bic still the best old school pens you can buy here in the UK? Absolutely. And get the Bic Crystal, like the really old school, the clear barrel one. It's an awesome pen. Um, Bic Round Stick would be the second choice. But get the Bic Crystal first. Um, so yeah, the fiber company is, the lo is a local, like a city company. And it looks like it'll be like 300 down, and I, they didn't list the up speed. So if it's 330... I'm gold. Like that's that's what I have here. Like and I just have to get that I got to figure all this stuff out though. So I've already started emailing them to say, "Hey, I have two separate connections. So like I have my main connection into my house and then I have a shipping department out back and like a smaller house. Like I'll have another account set up for that. Can I get like one big business account and can I get like can I get like a terabyte connection and like can we do all this stuff and I'll pay you whatever money you want to you want me to. So give it to me." Uh, Mergendorf, thanks for the follow. So that's where I'm at with the, with the fiber. It's going to come sooner than later and even better. So it's, I don't think it's municipal. I don't think it's city owned. It's just a local small business, but I haven't looked into it to see if they're municipally supported or not. I think they're not. So I haven't dug into them. I've just found all this out yesterday. So I'm very, very happy about that. So yeah, so we'll be on a, a local ISP, certainly by the end of the year, maybe by the end of the summer. I mean, there's like heavy duty crews out there every day and it's in front of my house. Like they've dug up the whole front yard running cables and they're just going to town. They're working really hard and really fast. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very positive of what might come out of this sooner rather than later. So that's good. All right, K9 play. Here's my postal question to you. So my local post office is, you know, your standard like single wide, double wide trailer style, right? One employee, you know, Monday through Friday, like nine to four type of situation. Very small, you know, probably it's got a couple hundred PO boxes in, in there, but it's very small. So when I talk to the person that works there, they always appreciate when I have a ton of packages because I guess it makes their numbers look better, right? So like, do they, do these types of postal services, like these one-off small town post offices, is it important, the, are their numbers important like that? Like, or are they gonna be there anyway? Like I could bring them, like next week I might bring them two to 300 packages. And like, she's like pretty excited about like the aspect. She's like, oh, this makes my numbers look good. I was like, what does that affect? Like, they're not gonna go away, I wouldn't think, you know, because it's a big enough area to support that. But when I dump like huge packages and they're not they're not like, when I was in Atlanta and I'd bring in huge, bo huge knock orders, they'd be like, oh my God, ugh. And this one now it's like, uh, I bring in like a box of 20, 30 packages and they're like, yeah, like you got some more tomorrow. Like what's, what's the schedule here? <laughs> so I just thought I, I just thought I'd, I'd mention that in out of curiosity is like, is that a thing? Will their numbers matter? So good morning, Schmevelin. Oh, thank you, Coco Lena. So I definitely support my, like I could go to the bigger hub I could go to the bigger hub, but I prefer to go to my smaller. I, I put my um, 
I put my PO box in there in the small facility, even though it's the the large facility is equidistant to my house, right where the like the postal carriers run from. Um, I just make sure to support the smaller one. So yeah. Anyway, that was just a commentary. Because one time I remember this happened years ago. I made a mistake in the return address of like a big order and one of them got returned to the wrong place but they knew it was me so they got it to the right place and she said I will, I'll never forget this she said yeah I didn't get credit for any of those and I'm like I don't even know what you're talking about getting credit for any of those <laughs> but I shipped them through her but the return address was like my home or like another or it was I think it was the Atlanta knock office at the time or something weird like that anyway it wasn't the local and I was like oh yeah that was a mistake so like yeah she's like I didn't get credit for those and that was like 200 packages I'm like sorry I guess I <laughs> small town had their post office closed because they didn't ship enough okay yeah good that's good to know i don't know totally know how that works so that's cool what else do we need to talk about chap did you see that um brooks sent me what leonardo posted on instagram yesterday did y'all see leonardo pins post the primary manipulation stuff got them all chopped up got them ready got them ready for the for the lave, got them ready for turning. <clears throat> sneaky, sneaky. I don't know what my next pen will be, depending on when that comes out. But if that's in like in the next couple months or so, that's probably my next pen. I don't think I have anything on the radar for a while. Yeah, I'm assuming a couple of months as well, Jim. So I wonder if they're going to be the new the new piston fillers. Right? Are they making are they making both models now? Or are they converting everything to the new bigger piston model? Or are they going to still have the converter captured converter models? I, I don't know. I'm asking out loud. <laughs> so the MZ Grande is the piston. So yeah, the way they worded like the the release of the four new colors made it made me made me think that they're like cutting over to all piston but i, I don't know the, like the existing memento zero is but is it going to continue to exist just brought the scriptorium i still gotta get the scriptorium renee just does such such good work <clears throat> Uh, did I bring anything else for show and tell today? I don't think I have anything new for show and tell today. Um, yeah, standard stuff. Stilo and Stile, that was the um, limited edition one, right? I saw that one. I would have bought that one if I hadn't already bought other ones. That was, that's a cool one. Primary manipulations are going to be the Grande. Yeah, that's cool. There's got to be like less than a hundred of them, right? Any idea when Mike will get his Lamy? I bet by next episode. It should be pretty cool. When he gets it. <clears throat> so I shipped it. Uh, I shipped it a week ago today. So it's been a week. So hopefully by next week show, if not the one after that one. This is totally, absolutely, 100% about percent about pens, Thai noodles. So I run a blog called penaddict.com. You can go over to Pen Addict. You can see we talk about this kind of stuff. We talk about pens. I should just I should put my my desk cam on just so um, so the new people can just see that there are actually pens and paper and like all the things we talk about. We're actually not talking about too much too much pen stuff today. I've talked about some new pen designs I'm working on. But this is literally about pens. Two colorways of primary munition, 80 rods each. No clue how many that'll make. 100 pins, 100 pins for the Grande. Otherwise, it's a, it's a shirt hair cast, 
right? So yeah, we got pins here, we got pins here, we got pins in here. Okay, we can talk about a pin real quick. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about what's in this case. This is kind of like my favorite kind of kind of setup right now. Finally ordered the Robert Oster Fire and Fire. Thank you so much. You sent a pin to Boca Mundo. I got to do that. I really got to do that. So let's talk about what we got going on here. What did you get, Jonathan? Did you post it? Hi, here's a pin. Thanks, Absolute Human. <laughs> Any new samples of your next Robert Oster ink? Um, so Robert sent me an email yesterday and said, Brad, I am so sorry. I'm just like running on fumes right now, but I will get to your change request soon. And I was like, don't ever apologize to me <laughs> is what I told him. I was like, just like Jonathan, I was like, don't ever apologize for like being busy or not feeling well or not working or anything like that. But yeah, so Thunder Viking, I'm waiting on round two, but he was nice enough to send me an email saying yesterday, I was like, I haven't forgot, but I'm just slammed and I need to sleep. <laughs> I'm like, don't worry about it. So yeah, that's cool. You want to win the, the pin attic, Franklin Kristoff? Yay. I hope so. I hope, I hope someone wins. Mm. Is that squeaky hanging out in the blue case? Yes, it is. Will that, will that pick up on microphone? It's not really squeaky. It's a little bit. So that's the G10 and the threads. Oh, there it was. The threads are, are, are fiber-based, right? So you can see they're kind of um, darker there. I don't know if you can see it. So when you cut through, like, the fiberglass, like, do you see the that? And so that texture on both sets of threads makes it sound like this. There you go. So Sir Jerkface over there likes to call it squeaky. It took me a minute, though, to see what you said. This is like my new favorite pen. This resin Y Studio. I use this thing all the time. It, because I put a needlepoint nib in it and it's just kind of like the perfect sketching sketching drawing pen. I know that wasn't for me, Brooks. Um but yeah, this is my non fountain pen carry case right now which has, well, this is a fountain pen, but it's still, I, it's hard to call this a fountain pen. It's such a weird pen. I have not seen the color of our shimmering 4th of July ink. So then I have my cyan spoke pen, uh, brass Y studio with the gold leaf, the rollerball one or the ballpoint one I have, I think they call it dragon's breath or something like that. That one has been a hard not to purchase. It's just so expensive. It's like 270, I want to say. It is glorious. It's everything I want in a pen. It's just hard to pull the trigger on that price. Like that's something I got really, really got to think about for a long time. Um, the Jetstream Edge 0.28 needle. Like it doesn't get any finer than that. The tactile turn that I didn't have on the podcast yesterday because I've been carrying it in this case. So the uh, side click, which is great. I showed y'all this last week. Boop. And then the Karen Dash fixed pencil. One of the best products ever made. So yeah. That's kind of my okay, it's got one fountain pen, but it's really not. It's such a needle. So what is this? This is the shimmer. Let's pull this one up. Stars and stripes. Let's see what this looks like. Oh wow, that's cool. glistening one with one without yeah that shimmer in there is really cool that was very bright yeah that's a cool looking uh that's a cool looking shimmer
Oh, look. There's this one. I use, I've been using that a lot. My most used, this is, these are probably my most used pens right now. The Brooks Safari, the um, Fujiyama Blue, just because I got it. And I use the heck out of this damn pen. The Estabrook SD, I have the journaler nib. I have to text, I need to text Carrie and see when they're gonna sell these journaler nibs. Do y'all know when and where they're gonna sell the journaler nibs? Because I'm holding off on my review. I will hold things to review to like help people sell stuff. Right, I've had this journaler nib for like a month. I want to review it, but I've never seen it go on sale anywhere. So I need to text Carrie to figure out what's going on with the journal journaler nib. So just trying to think. You were able to get one cool net just in person. I wonder if they have it on the site. And how much? And how much was it? Was it like forty, fifty dollars? So they just. Uh, gave it to you as a nib option for that pin, probably with a slight upcharge, I'm guessing, for for that nib. Yeah, about fifty dollars. I'm gonna text Carrie right now. Because I've been meaning to for about two weeks. There we go. Is it like a PO type nib? No, it's a stub, essentially. Um, I think I might have the original one that it was modeled after. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see this here. It's essentially a stub. If you look at the Ink and Volt review I just did, you can see the writing style. It's definitely more of a stub. But it's on a steel nib, so it's got some firmness, which I like. Um, but yeah, it's really hard to see on here. I have to go through my Esterbrook nibs. I only have about six or seven of the vintage nibs. I think I might have the one that this was named after. I don't know that it's a, an uncommon one, but I think I might have it. Silent Meow, thanks for the follow. I appreciate you. So yeah, if you look at the uh, Ink and Volt review I did Monday... That's the journaler nib. The written part of the review and the drawing part of the review are the journaler nib. It's it's very very nice. I it's it's basically a custom nib add-on. You know, and for for like that fifty dollars, it's like if I bought a loose nib from Gina, like a a loose Yovo nib from Gina directly, it would be like forty to fifty dollars. That's what this is but it's specifically designed after like the Esterbrook 9,000 something nib unit from whenever 30s, 40s, whatever it is. So it's really cool. I'm, I'm really happy with this nib. I just don't know what the availability is. Metal threads on acrylic pens seem to have become more prominent in the past year. Yeah, I wonder why. I don't have any thought process on that. And they're gonna do more get a pet. I, I assume they're gonna do more. They've already done a second one with or they're doing a second one i know i don't know if i'm allowed to say that i might so i'm not i'm gonna stop there and not tell you who it's who it's done by yeah maybe it's a durability thing i don't know so i know there's at least a second one coming if they haven't announced it yet if they have announced it someone will say in here and i'll confirm it <laughs> but um there's for a fact the second one coming then after that i don't know but there's like 200 nibs for them to choose from they could do all kinds of manipulations and um get some um, I, I like that they're getting work to like the nib nib grinders too, right? So they're giving them work, they're giving them exposure, um, paying them for the nibs. So yeah, the second one. There we go, Paper Cat Ladies got it. I didn't know if I was allowed to say it, but if y'all know, then it's out there. So JJ Lax is doing the second one. I don't know what the model is though. Um, so yeah, JJ Lax is doing the second one. Do those nibs work on other pens or SD only? That's a good question. I mean, I'm assuming it's just a Yovo nib, right? So I could take out 
even if the nib section wasn't swappable, I could pull the nib and put it in another Yovo, right? So I'm not going to answer your question definitively because I don't know. I don't see why, at a minimum, I couldn't pull the nib from the unit and put it in another Yovo number six unit, even if the um, if the whole nib section, if the whole nib unit doesn't replace just directly, which it might. So it's their same nib. So I just have to test it, but I would assume so. Uh, JJ Lax out of New York City does uh, nib work and um, some pen, some retail and uh, some manufacturing, I guess. What is what all does Josh do? He's a good dude. He's a lawyer in real life, but he's a big part of the pen community and goes to pen shows and does nib work and repairs and maintenance. So super cool. Really, really nice guy. So I don't know the model that he's going to replicate, but uh, we'll see soon enough. So hopefully one of these will replicate like the accounting nib, like the needle, the nail accounting nib. That's, that's the one I'll, I'll, I'll definitely want to get. Oof. <clears throat> so what else what else is new coming out? We talked about a bunch of new stuff on the podcast this week. We miss anything? Did y'all like the new Black Wings? Any of the pencil fans in here like the new Black Wings? I thought they were pretty hot. And I'm not going to buy them. Yeah, there's definitely some different housings. Like, I swap out my uh, Y-Studio, and I can't swap the housings, right? The Schmidt housings um, don't fit. Uh, the Yovo housings don't smit, fit in the Schmidt housings, but the nibs, the number five nibs, do. So you just got to play around. I don't have all the uh, all the specifics of like what works with what where. So I'll I'll test that out for you, Evan, because now I'm curious. Like I need to know. Journaler nib offered in the upcoming SD Sparkles, like as a um, like once they go to retail, that'll be a choice maybe. Does the Schmidt housing have a metal sleeve on that? I don't think on this one. I can't remember. They convince you to sub on that one. I don't know if I'm gonna, I'm not gonna take this out here. I, I think it does, Jim. I'll take it out and look. I just don't wanna make a mess here. When I get home, when we're streaming at home, we're gonna make all kinds of messes. We're gonna make all kinds of messes at home. We can do all kinds of ink swabbing at my house. So I'm not, I don't care if I spill ink on my carpet. I'm not gonna spill ink on this carpet. OMG, Black Wings are back. They, yeah, they've been back for like five years now. Did you and Mike decide what to do for the fourth Lamy giveaway? Not in specific detail. I'm almost, it's gonna depend on what we're gonna do for St. Jude this year. And right now they don't know what they're gonna do for St. Jude this year. Um, St. Jude started to be able to have people on site. I don't know the details i'm almost certain we're going to do something for that though japan has opened up u.s shipping again that's cool <laughs> flow ride is my house yeah we're going to do it for charity so what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask caroline uh weaver so she just did this i've my biggest hesitancy with charity giveaways is tracking right i can collect money but like how do i like pick the winner off of tracking. So Caroline did it through Venmo and I'm going to ask her how that went. Um, she had people donate through Venmo. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's always been the challenge because I have a field notes set that I want to auction off for charity or do a raffle for charity. And she just said, you know, use $10, send 10, every $10 you send up to $50 gets you one ticket into the raffle. 
well then how do you manage how do you manage pulling that in dana thank you for the sub i appreciate you that's awesome i really really appreciate that let me give you some cheers let's go and then i'll have to manually turn the cheers off because they're dumb um you can use a site called cheddar up okay i'll have to look at that i'm gonna write that down patrick oh is your raffle legal i know this is the whole thing patrick this is why i haven't done i'm scared of a raffle i know this is why i didn't do it last year i know i don't know what the right thing to do is it's like all i want to do is raise money for charity but it's like i have to jump through these hoops <laughs> <laughs> I think I am unsubscribed from the St. Jude emails. That doesn't stop this, the regular mail from coming, though. Why not do it as an auction? Because not everyone can afford the auction, even though you could get some high rollers in there. And I would rather have more people have a chance. And I think you could raise more money with a 5 or $10 ticket. You know, so let's, let's do this. Um... I want to raffle off a full, a complete collection of field notes, limited edition releases, colors releases, say like editions one through 40. Okay. So I, I, I have them all. Like this is something that's sitting in my closet that I'm doing nothing with and I want to do it for charity. So I can say, here's an auction bid on this, right? Not everyone in this chat is going to go a thousand dollars for that. Okay. Let's just make up numbers. Not everyone's going to go $1,000 or $2,000, you know, whatever that was going to go for. You know, like there's one or two people that can do that. But maybe I can sell, you know, 100 or 200 or 500 $10 tickets and raise $5,000 instead of $2,000 and all of you can enter because you can take a shot you can donate five or ten dollars a lot easier than you can bid a thousand dollars to be the higher the highest bidder does that make sense so i think number one more people can get involved and number two i think i can raise more money the problem is what you call it and how you manage it and it's such a nightmare it's it's really a mess and all I want to do is give money to, ch all I want to do is raise money for St. Jude's. And it gives me a headache <laughs> to want to do the right thing. Cal, I think that's probably the best way to do it, right? Show me your receipt and I'll put you in the list. Right, but I would rather worry about legal compliance to raise more money. That's why I haven't done an auction. I would rather do it right to raise more money than to do it easy and raise less. It's a challenge. Y'all think about this. I'm open to ideas. But like, it's a very like, I don't want to get in trouble kind of thing. <laughs> Oh, I'd open it to international. Absolutely. I'll need to look at, uh, let me write those things down, Jim. Yeah. Agre agree, Miguel. Agree. Have I seen the Ferris wheel inks on Kickstarter? No. I didn't, I wasn't like a big fan of their first ink, so I haven't really looked at it. See, like Tiltify is great, but I've only seen it on stream. I have to look and see if I can do something off stream. So let's write down Tiltify, see what I can do for that. Because you can link that directly to the charity, right, Rook? 
Like you just link it and people submit it and then I just need to understand the back end. Hey, Rich Sticks. Tilting, that is not Tiltify. To... Uh, Jim, what was that cheddar thing you said? If I wasn't impressed by Ferris Wheel's marketing department last time, you'll be less impressed this time. Okay, then I won't, bo <laughs> I won't bother. I don't know what it is. I, I just have this feeling about Ferris Wheel. Thank you, Jim. I, I don't. I have nothing to base anything off of. I just wasn't comfortable with that first one, even though I thought the products looked cool. I like. I wasn't there, and so I just kind of haven't been paying attention to them in the past. Whether that's fair or not, I don't know. That's just how I feel. Um, okay rook i'll look at that because tiltify is at least something i'm f familiar with it's well respected it's heavily used and i think you know i could maybe manage something about that agree rich like i wasn't gonna pay like oh i like the marketing and i like the design but i wasn't gonna pay like 30 dollars for like a flat red ink and that's what that first campaign seemed like to me right when you're paying a, a high price for packaging and design and a low price for the actual product in that case the ink like just straight flat magenta is like i can do that for ten dollars over here so thank you rook i do have a big challenge with that i just want to do it right <laughs> yeah and there's a balance like you can care about aesthetics and product but from the first campaign, I was just so disheartened with the results of the product that it they're they're like off the radar for me. That doesn't mean I'll never do it. Like I'll always give products second chances and stuff, but it just didn't do it to me. Ah, uh, yeah, that's never good, Evan. So yes, that okay, yeah. Uh, where is it? Jim. Jim said it. That's exactly. They are a Kickstarter. They are perfect for Kickstarter, right? That is like the Kickstarter aesthetic. So, rewinding all the way back to the roadie. I don't know if anyone asks. We're not Kickstartering that. That's going to be direct sale. That reminded me of that. So, whenever we launch the roadie, it'll be direct sale. And I'm getting close. I'm talking to our manufacturer. I think I will, we will eventually do a Kickstarter for the wax canvas um, um, Brass Town and Sinclair. I'm thinking. I'm just like trying to wrap my head around that right now for Knock to see what we're going to do. We got to get some new products out there for Knock. And this one, I'd want to pay in advance, like for Kickstarter. Um, Kickstarter purposes where I could I could get all the funds and then pay for the production. We need new knock stuff. God, more than you know, Tony. <laughs> more than you know. We need new knock stuff. You have the the original wax canvas Sinclair. That's the good stuff. I don't even have that. But these these turned out great, so I think I want to sell them. So we okay. I'm going to rewind what I just said. It may not be Kickstarter. It might be pre direct pre-sale. Whatever it is, we would do an advance purchase for a production release six months, right? So when I said Kickstarter, I didn't exactly mean Kickstarter. It might be Kickstarter. It could be direct pre-sale from the Knox site. Semantics, so. <clears throat> Yes, wax canvas. That's what this is. I know it's hard to see on here. Um, so I have a Sinclair. They would and they would be this aqua. It's this is ra the Raven and Aqua colorway. So it'd be black wax canvas and aqua. The Sinclair you will find Patrick to be one of the most useful cases you own. Like it just, it does a lot more than it seems like it'll do. 
Uh, Hippo Noto looks like it's starting to ship. I say looks like because mine delivered. How well does it fit in a pocket? It's too big for a pocket. You will not be comfortable. I got my Hippo Noto like two, three days ago. I just had one. I ordered one B6. That's probably going to be the... I, I think I'm done with... We'll see. I think that was my last campaign. That was a lot. So, yeah. That, the Sinclair is too big to pocket. I've never liked it when I've pocket carried it. I've carried it in a front shorts pocket before, and I've ended up just being frustrated by it. We're going to have some more fodder stacks. Um, I think you would prefer the fodder stack for pocket carry. <laughs> A couple of Sinclairs keep getting stolen. Yeah, like the Brass Town's my favorite design and the thing I'm most proud of. I think the Sinclair's our best case, right? Those are two different things. Wax canvas fodder stack? Oof, I hadn't thought about that. I got to see if they can execute on this fodder stack, Thor, that they have a they have an order for a fodder stack. They sent me a sample that I signed off on. I still want to see if it actually comes true on their execution. Remember, that was the one that they couldn't make. So I wouldn't want to invest in the wax canvas product until they get this the regular Cordura one right. Wax Canvas Lookout would totally be a possibility. What are the advantages, if any, of Wax Canvas? No pure advantage. Style and aesthetic. It's going to show wear. Where Nylon Cordura does not show wear, this one will show wear. It's maybe a little bit more waterproof. So the nylon has a coating. It's called DWR, Durable Water Repellent. So that's where you'll see, like, if it rains on it, you'll see the... Uh, dots like pull up right and you can shake them off where the wax canvas will just straight reject that um more aggressively but they'll still get both get soaked if you put them in water because there's seams in them so um and the wax canvas will cost you more that's the biggest benefit <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they way collect more pet hair. Holy crap. If you have a lot of pet hair at your house, dogs or cats, this wax canvas eats it for lunch and breakfast and dinner. You need a uh, you need a lint roller if you're going to have wax canvas uh if you're going to have wax canvas goods. I know, I know, Thunder Viking. I uh, trust me. I want to get this done. This this might be a summertime thing. Although it's I say it's I say summertime like it's like it's still a few months away and we're 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 about there right now. So time is going by too fast. So who knows? You have a C but you're running out of space. Yeah. So like but like I we could do a pre sale for the for the Brass Town and the Sinclair, but you wouldn't see them for six months, right? At least. It would be just like a Kickstarter campaign where we pre-order, we manufacture, we pay for it, it gets manufactured, and then it's shipped to me, then I ship it out. That's like a six-month turnaround. So just something to keep in mind. If and when we do launch it, that's what we're looking at. It won't be an insta-buy. Like, if I told you today that we're launching this, I couldn't tell you like for sure you, you would get it for Christmas, right? Any new seed colors? Definitely not right now. I mean, eventually, yes. The seed is one thing that is not on the current current timetable. Lookouts, fodder stacks, pencil cases are all on the... See you, Sassy Helens. Uh, definitely come stop by again. Love to have you. Those are on the short term. The Brass Town and Sinclair are on the medium term, and then nothing else is on the board. Although some paper products we got to restock. So those are on the medium term. Rich Sticks, thank you, buddy. I appreciate you. <clears throat> All right, I think that's about going to wrap it up today. Chad, anything else we need to talk about? I got Spoke Pen launching at noon. What time is it? 11.15. So I'll have shipping to do this afternoon. Plenty of work to do, plenty of writing to do, all kinds of good stuff to do, and then uh, then we'll see. 
we'll see. So, um, yeah. Let me know if you got anything else. Otherwise, I think it's going to be a wrap today, chat. All right, Steve, and supposing. All right. Thank you all so much. Hey, real quick, it's my dog Toby's birthday today. He just turned four, so y'all tell Toby happy birthday. If you see him on the internet today, he might be on the Instagram later. Might have a birthday picture. So Toby turned four, um, and my daughter's not taking it well. <laughs> She's like, oh, my God, he's four. How much longer is he going to be with this? So uh, happy birthday, Toby. I hope you're out there watching, and uh, I got some pets for you when I get home. All right? Oh, no, what did you do, Jackie? I missed your spokesperson pro pro comment. Uh. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dana, for the follow and the sub, which came first. <laughs> Y'all are awesome. Y'all be good. I will uh, I will be on the internets later, and um, y'all have a good day. Bye.